Hello and welcome to Teach Online TV. My name is Tyler Basu and today I am here with a special guest, Tim Vipond. He is the CEO of the Corporate Finance Institute. We are about to tackle uh, a pretty important topic for online course creators and that's the topic of, of finance, of budgeting, of tracking really important metrics for your online course business. And Tim has over 10 years of experience as a, uh, as a financial professional. He's done everything from investment banking, investment management, corporate development, corporate finance. He's an online course creator himself. And uh, the reason we connected is because Tim showed me uh, an incredible spreadsheet that he's put together. Uh, and he's tracking all of the important metrics of his online course business. And he's even using that data to forecast what his business is going to look like one, two, and three years out. So this is going to be a... This is going to be a little bit different from most of the interviews that you've seen on our YouTube channel and on the blog because he's actually going to show us the template. We're going to share his screen in a couple of minutes here. And uh, you can also download this template as well. So look for the link uh, below the video. And if you're on the blog, look for the link uh, on the blog post. You can actually um, you can opt in to grab this template that Tim has put together. And if you want to open up the template and follow along as we have this conversation, or if you just want to watch, uh, watch the video here. As I said, Tim is going to show us this template on his screen. But we're basically going to go through um, all of the different, uh, all of all of the important metrics that you should be tracking uh, as an online course creator. You can use a template like Tim's. Uh, it's essentially a spreadsheet that you created in Excel, right? In Microsoft Excel, you used to put this together. Yeah, that's right. I spend a little bit too much time in Excel, so uh, you know, I, I sort of did this for a living for a long time, and now I do it as a course creator. And um, yeah, super excited to share this with the Think of It community. Awesome, awesome. It is. I have to say, it is one of the uh, the best Excel spreadsheets I've ever seen. Uh, and uh, so I, I think it will give a lot of value to people. But before we before we jump into it, um, there's one thing I want to mention. Kind of a disclaimer, I guess, because uh, we are talking about money a little bit, but we're not talking about taxes, uh, income tax, sales tax, none of that stuff, because that stuff is uh, going to depend on where you are in the world, you know, your state, your province, your country, and so on. Uh, and we wanted this this conversation to be valuable for any course creator, regardless of where they are. So we are steering clear of certain topics. Uh, what we're focusing on is as the as an online course creator uh, and who's building a business around selling courses on the internet. Uh, what are the important numbers you need to keep an eye on? You, you know, we're, we're we're talking about revenue uh, expenses. Uh, conversion rates from you know free trials to paid and and forecasting your sales you know in into the future things like that uh, customer lifetime value uh, acquisition costs of your customers uh, we're, we want to get you to think uh, like an accountant slash marketer slash business owner slash course creator we're gonna try and dive into this topic and uh, and 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 get all of the uh, those important metrics uh, talked about here and of course and we'll go through the spreadsheet as well uh, now, Tim, I just have to say before we jump into this, uh, because I when I was when I was going through college, I was uh, learning marketing, and uh, but they made us take an accounting course because they told us accounting and numbers is the language of business. So even though if you're going out there and you're learning how to market businesses or market products, you need to be able to read and understand numbers. And they even had us, uh, you know, they did a, a few months uh, where we had to learn Excel, and I'm thinking. Man, well, I'm you know I'm paying all this money to go to college, and here I am taking a course on Microsoft Excel. But the instructor said something that I'll never forget about why it's so important to have these kind of spreadsheets to track this kind of information. And they said the reason you put you you put a bunch of numbers into a spreadsheet is so you can make decisions. That's that's what spreadsheets are for. That's what tracking these kinds of things are for. It's so you can make decisions about your marketing, about your business, about where you're going in the future. The numbers don't lie. And as long as you learn how to read the data and read the numbers, they tell the story of your business for you. They tell you what's going on. They don't sugarcoat it. It's very yeah. black and white. <laughs> that, that, I think that's right. I mean, that's interesting. I think essentially business is decision making under uncertainty. 
is sort of a way to describe what you do in business. And um, accounting and finance is definitely one of the languages lives of business. Um, I think you know there are many equally important languages, but. Uh, it, it is a little bit technical and and not something that comes intuitively to everyone. So that's why um, you know it's actually quite a pleasure to teach it because a lot of people have these aha moments as we go through this and they sort of realize um, that they can understand accounting and it's not necessarily that complicated. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and I think it's important with that anyone who creates a course. You know, even if, if they've never, especially if they've never started any kind of business before, I think the moment that you create a course, you have something for sale and you're, you're doing all this marketing to spread the word, to get customers, to get students, you, you are essentially, you've essentially become an entrepreneur. Now you may be doing this on the side, you may still be employed full time, but the moment you create a course and you're selling it on the internet, you now have an online business. And so as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, uh, there is going to be some terminology that is new to you, um, you know, and we don't always know. Nobody gives us the textbook or nobody tells us what are the important things we actually need to track and keep an eye on. And we can sometimes get caught up in, you know, the vanity metrics. How many followers do I have on Facebook kind of thing versus how many people are hitting my sales page? What's the what's the value of a customer to me over the next 12 months? Those are some of the things that I think are more more relevant to to an entrepreneur. Uh, but yeah, let's dive into it. So uh, Tim is going to share his screen with us. Uh, he's going to pull up a template he's put together, which shows uh, a 12 month time frame. Uh, so 12 columns on the template, one for each month of the year, and a bunch of the data that he tracks as an online course creator and as an entrepreneur. But all the metrics that he looks at, we'll see the trends, we'll see conversion rates, we'll see growth, all this kind of stuff. So we're going to go through it. Um, you know, one one section at a time, one one uh, one metric at a time, beginning with the marketing stuff. Now, so before we get into uh, the looking at sales and revenue and expenses and those kinds of things, um, those happen generally after a sale is made. So we'll take a look at those in the second part of the of the interview here. But in the beginning, let's let's look at the marketing metrics because uh, in order to get a sale. You have to market your course, first of all, and I really like how you've broken down the way that you track uh, the different marketing channels that you're spreading the word on and you're actually seeing you know, what percentage of the people who hit your sales page end up or where they came from. So yeah, if you could just take a second to uh, open up your spreadsheet. So again, if you haven't if you haven't downloaded it, this spreadsheet, uh, go ahead and do that. I've got the links to download this spreadsheet below the video. Or if you just want to follow along on the video for now and then download it later, I mean, you could customize this yourself. You can put in your own numbers. But I'm just basically gonna uh, ask Tim, you know, what's on here and why is it there and why is it important uh, sure, as we sure. go through it. Yes. Yeah, so, so let me just start with a with a real quick, very high level overview of how this is laid out, and you know, just a quick comment on you know, and you already mentioned it before, but what what we're uh, talking about and what we're not talking about. So, this is the, for a hypothetical business. Um, it's not based on any real numbers from any business that I've that I've looked at or worked with. Um, it's it's thought about as a, a sort of a startup for a course creator who's starting to sell their first courses. Uh, basically starting at zero and forecasting it out 12 months. Um, and I've broken it into two different tabs here. The first one is a 12 month, almost like a budget. If you were to think about what you wanted to do over the course of a year, what would that look like? And then I've also gone one step further and said, okay, if you sort of get to the point where you think this is gonna be a real business for you or something that you're gonna uh, continue to work at, you might wanna look at forecasting and and that's where we go out 36 months and you would base your forecast on actual results that you see coming in so um, I'll, I'll start by going over the 12 month forecast and how I laid that out and you mentioned that that we start by looking at at um, things that are before revenue revenue is is almost like a lagging indicator um, for a business and and really it's derived from depending on the type of business, you know, activities and, and sort of value that you bring that generates revenue. And for us online course creators, I think traffic is um, one of the earliest metrics we can look at. Um, I will say though that there are activities before traffic that you should track. 
and I don't have on this spreadsheet, but you might look at things like number of, of blog posts, um, number of um, you know pages created on your website, or number of, of emails sent. Th these are the things that would actually direct people to your site and bring the traffic. So I don't have that laid out here, but it's definitely something you should track. And based on those activities, you're gonna get this section here, which is your sources of traffic by month. So I've broken traffic down into several categories and you'll have your own that are unique to you and your business, but I generally like to think of organic traffic as being search engine traffic. Uh, paid traffic could be from a variety of sources such as AdWords um, or, or affiliates or, or other paid channels. Like Facebook ads, for example. Yeah, Facebook ads. And uh, just and just to clarify, Tim, for a sec here, um, when we're talking about traffic, we're talking about visitors to the sales page of the course, or at least the course website, correct? Yeah, that's right. Whether it's okay. like your your full list of courses or one particular course, I would just think of this as traffic to a, a page that could convert to a sale. Okay. So maybe let's let's assume that somebody's got one course and this whole spreadsheet is for tracking sales of that one course. And so in that scenario, this would be traffic to the sales page of that course. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's use that as an example. That's great. So as you're thinking about this business, um, when you're first starting out at the beginning of the year, it, you know, you could make an estimate of, of how much traffic you could get by a variety of sources. And, and some of it will be, you know, free in theory, some of it will be paid some of it will just be direct from you giving people the URL. Um, some of it could come from social, from email. There, there's a whole variety of sources of traffic that you can generate. And the idea here is that you, you think about each channel and you think about what's a realistic volume that you can, that you can achieve. And then you get your total traffic at the bottom of that. So I should say that the way this model is laid out is, is any cell that contains a blue number with this light shading in it is an assumption. Mm -hmm. And the assumptions are there for you to change, for you to just type in whatever number you think is appropriate. All of the black cells are formulas, so they just automatically fill in without you doing any work. So that, this is how we build up the first level of the business, which is traffic to a sales page or some type of a conversion page. Right. And so we could even, let's say at the end of the month, input what actually happened, right? Like we, we could use this as uh, not just for forecasting, but for tracking the actual numbers as well. And then maybe after we've been tracking for a year, take that and forecast the next, uh, the next year after that based on like goals that we have. Yeah, absolutely. So I would encourage you to fill this in and maybe you use a different color coding as the actual results come in. Mm -hmm. And then on this next tab over here, what I actually envisioned was that you had this period of time of historical information. And then as you said, you set goals. So now instead of in the second version, instead of picking a specific traffic number uh, for May 2018, you actually have a growth rate. And so the formula is based on a growth rate, a month over month growth rate. And that's kind of like your goal is, is in this case saying I want to grow 12% month over month. So that would be that would be a shift um, down the road. And, and that's what those those rows above uh, above are like the first set of rows that are percentages. Those are growth uh, rates. That's right. So this is showing a month over month growth rate by channel. And this just automatically fills in. If you don't have any numbers in here, um, you just see that it, it sort of goes NA, and right. if you go down to zero, it's minus 100%. So uh, th that just fills in for you automatically. Okay, so we could fill in like our actual numbers each month, and then it would tell us what our growth rate was from the, from yeah. the previous yeah. month. Yes, exactly. So if you, yeah, if you, um, if you just type over these with whatever your actual numbers are, it's gonna spit out for you the growth rates at the top. And then over a year's time, you'll have a pretty good idea of what a normalized growth rate is for, for your for your courses. And, and maybe you realize that that 10 or 20 percent month over month is realistic or maybe you're growing a 50 percent month over month. I have no idea. But 
you can figure that out pretty quickly. No, that's very cool. And what, what I like about this as well is you can figure out if a particular channel is not growing at all or like, you know, maybe social media is not really working out for you, but uh, but paid traffic is or email is, you know, so you can choose to, you know, based on after you, know, after you track for a few months or let's say a year and you've got all this data on which channels brought in the most traffic to your to your core sales page. You could then choose to invest more time and energy on those channels, the ones that are actually doing well and can double uh, down, as you, as you might yeah. say. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's back to your point about um, this this being a tool to make decisions. And it's, that's exactly what it's for: is figuring out which channels are working, which are not working. You know, where you're converting or not converting. You know, how price is impacting. Um, your volume, all these kind of things uh, are, are, are being informed by the results as they come in. Awesome. So Tim, before we, uh, I see conversion is the next section, but before we jump into that, um, I'm just curious, what, what, what tool are, are you using to grab your numbers? Oh uh, yeah. Is it Google yeah. Analytics or? Yeah, what, great what question. I was, I was, I was going to mention, so for me, it's Google Analytics. I can get all the traffic from all the channels um, through Google Analytics. Um, I, I don't know if you have uh, what you're seeing from course creators at Thinkific, what some other sources are. Uh, well, we use Google Analytics ourselves as well. And so I think, and that's our probably our go-to recommendation, but I just want to make sure people know. Um, Google Analytics, if there's anything else out there, anything even more robust or more, more detailed, I'd, I'd be interested to hear about it. But I think Google Analytics for most people is going to be the go-to tool to get these numbers. Cool. So uh, let's let's move on to uh, to conversion. Um, I see that you've you've got a uh, two two items under conversion: the the free trial conversion and the full full course conversion. And you can do this on Thinkific, of course. You can offer a free trial for your course. So this is um, we've assumed that I guess the goal of the sales page is to get people into the free trial. You're tracking the conversion rate of the, you know, from all the people that hit that sales page, what percentage of them enroll in the free trial. And from there, you're looking at what percentage uh, decide to pay for the course. Is that basically what you've what you've set up here? Yeah, that's exactly it. So I think about I, I imagine most course creators uh, probably have a multi step conversion, at, at least for a lot of their students. And so whether that that first conversion is a free trial or it's just an outright free course um, that feeds into other courses, or or it's a webinar, or it's um, some type of like a an ebook that you download. Whatever it is, whatever it is that you're using, you most likely have this two step conversion. And then, so so first, I would look at how many students I th I believe would sign up for that that first like sort of freemium part part of the freemium model, and then how many would later convert to actually purchase the full course. So this is essentially the sales funnel section, and there's, di I mean, there's, as you just said, there's different, uh, there's different components of a sales funnel. Some people do, you know, free trial to paid course, free course to paid course, uh, low price course to high price course, you know, email course to like. There's different ways you could do it, but we're free to just input whatever it is that we that you know, whatever it is that we're offering and we want to track in there, right? We can just go ahead and change the label, I guess. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I think that for the purposes of, of this little demonstration here, I've kept it fairly simple, but you might actually have, um, you know, a whole bunch of categories for, for your conversions, like by channel, you may actually repeat this. So you may say, it, I've used a blended conversion, but you may say, what's the conversion rate of traffic that was paid, organic, direct, social, or other? Mm -hmm. And and so you could add you would if you were if you were to do that you would essentially just add a bunch of rows here and you would you would take the numbers and you would have like you know sort of three steps so or or however many channels you want to track um, but but for simplicity here I've just assumed that all channels are providing equal quality uh, traffic although that may not be true but but that it works well for this model to just assume that it's a blended rate. And so th those percentages there, uh, let's, like with the, in that first row for January, we've got total traffic uh, 675. So that's uh, you know almost 700 people that hit the sales page. So the three free trial conversion, 3%, that means 20 people are now in a free trial. 
And then from there, we've got out of 20 people in a free trial, you've assumed that one pays for the course. And so that's that 5% comes from one out of 20, correct? Exactly. And, you know, I, I've tried to be, uh, let's just say, pretty uh, conservative here with a very first month of a course when, when who knows if anyone's going to buy it. So you, you kind of make this guess about how many people will sign up um, for free trial, how many will sign up for orders, and then you back into what that implied conversion rate is as opposed to what I'll show you here on the 36 month forecast is is over time once you have an understanding of like a normalized conversion rate in this case it looks like let's say 7% then instead of predicting the number of enrollments I would just I would just predict the conversion rate and I would say I would flip it around so then I would say based on a 7% conversion rate how many new students will I get so so you can come at it either way yeah. But um, I think in these early days, it's it's intuitively easier to think about how many students will sign up. Yeah. And once you have that, you know, that conversion rate, uh, it's pretty easy to, you know, take that number uh, and set goals based on that number. Like if, if you know that you, you, you've you got, uh, you know, a 7% conversion rate, let's say, or you got one, one sale, uh, going back to that first column in January, let's say somebody gets one sale, a paid sale from uh, what was 675 visitors to their sales page, then they know that roughly, you know, assuming nothing else changes, that for every 700 people that get to their website, they're going to get one sale. So you can work backwards from there as saying like, okay, if next month I want to make two sales, then I need to probably get about 1400 people to my website. Does that make sense? And then it looks like that's happened in the next column. There's more, um, or this is a running total. I see a month to so month. I've got a running total of. Uh, so so I yeah I've got essentially um, the number of new students each month, and then also a running total, which it may just be interesting to count what's your what's your total student count, and that sort of feeds into your email list and and sort of the the overall size of the business. Yeah. Okay, cool. No, I, no, I really like this. So we've gone from, uh, you know, tracking uh, which of the different marketing channels uh, people are that are working and getting people to our sales page. From that, we're tracking how many people signed up for a free trial or or an introductory course or a free course, and from there, how many people signed up for a paid course. So the moment we're getting people signing up for paid courses, now we have revenue. So this opens up a whole new. Uh, a whole new uh, can of things to be tracking and metrics to be looking at. So why don't you uh, walk us through how you set up the revenue here? And yeah, absolutely. And and again, it's simplified in in one line here, which is average order value, which or or average course price, whatever you'd like to call it. And depending on the level of complexity you want, you may add um, a whole series of rows here with with individual course prices. That then you take an average of, or, or maybe you only have one course, and so this is fairly straightforward. Uh, but this number is representative of the the fully discounted or or net price of the course. So what I've just tried to make up here is this scenario where someone's starting off in their very first month with a lot of discounting, and and I think ultimately they want to get to this column over here in December where it's three hundred dollars is the average course price. Okay. But they've sort of had a set a strategy of incrementally moving the price of that course up over the year. Yep. And then to calculate the total revenue line, you simply take the average course price and multiply it by the number of, of, of fully paid conversions that you have in the month. So you can see here, um, this course creator hits about 5,000 a month of revenue by December based on 16 courses at $300. Okay, and, be cool. and below that, I've also done uh, the what I'll call the run rate, the revenue run rate, which might be interesting to look at. It's just simply the current month times 12. So if you have a goal of building, a, in this case, a $60,000 a year revenue business, um, you've done that by December. Okay, no, that, that makes sense. Um, and so would this change at all if somebody is doing a membership model and they're charging like a recurring fee? Uh, it's just not a one-time sale for their course? Yeah, absolutely. So if you were doing a, a recurring revenue model, what you would do is you would have um, up here where I've got total students, yep. you would have below that 
you would have either you could call it a retention rate or a churn rate mm. but essentially what you would have to assume and I could even just just show like a very simple example of it let's just say that uh, the the uh, churn rate was 25% meaning that that 25% of the students you sign up drop off each year okay. uh, sorry each month then essentially what you would do is you would track uh, the number of students that that no longer continue and then below that um, you would have a total and then once you've got this sort of ongoing number of students that's building over time you would multiply it by by the average monthly um, membership fee right right and that would that would also end up um, showing you the um, the annualized revenue as well like you could predict pretty accurately once you know your your churn rate uh, you know wh how what your your monthly revenue is going to be six months 12 months from now yes absolutely yeah so just a little bit more work to do there on the on the customer modeling yeah yeah well we'll, we'll keep it simple we'll keep going with the with assuming one course you know one one time price and that's it um, but and I do like that you show that somebody gradually increasing the price of the course because that's something we recommend doing is uh, you know the first course you create or the first version of the of your course you create might be quite simple you know you might be doing a beta launch offering it to a few people getting some feedback getting some testimonials improving the course over time and increasing your price over time um, but I like this because this actually helps you test different price points you can see right away uh, as you're changing the price of your course if that affected your conversion rates or then or your your sales uh, your, your sales conversions mm hmm yeah absolutely and so this is just a hypothetical situation but in this situation you see that that there's really no detrimental impact on conversion as price goes up and maybe that's because as you as you pointed out quality goes up as well and so uh, you know every month you're working on the course you're adding new content and making it better and and therefore you can justify a higher price Cool. Um, okay, so now we're going to get into some of the expenses. Um, I mean, revenue is, is not the same as profit. We're, we're, our sales are going to bring in that revenue, but then uh, there's you know there's uh, payment processing fees, which I see you've included there, and we'll and then we'll get into some of the actual costs of having an online business and having a you know a course website and and all those things. Um, and so we'll end up with profit at the bottom. But if you could walk us through how you've uh, separated the the type the expenses and the, just the common types of expenses you've assumed that a, a course creator will have. Yeah, so I've broken all the expenses down into two categories. The first is variable, and the second is fixed. And in the accounting world, that just mean variable just means that that cost is is directly applied to every order. So if you do twice as many orders, you have your variable cost is twice twice as high in total. Um, it's based on the number of orders or transactions. And so uh, I think for most course creators, uh, payment processing, if you're using Stripe or PayPal, I've, you know, it's typically running at around 3%. So that's really the first variable expense you incur right off the top. Before you get your money, it's, it's gonna have 3% taken off the top by the payment processors. Um, another another big variable cost for most course creators, I assume, is um, uh, like a like a cost per click or a cost per lead or, or a cost per acquisition. If whatever. It's running ads. Yeah, any type of ad that you're running. Um, in most cases, there it might be a, the case that it's not a variable cost. It's it's to say it's like a monthly flat rate, but I think in most cases it's going to be variable. And I think cost per click is a fairly a fairly common form as well so that's why I've used just as an example here 40 cents a click as a, a variable marketing expense mm -hmm. okay so if you were if you're using cost per click what you would do is put in that assumption there and then you you would multiply it out based on so in this case 40 cents and you have 350 uh, clicks to uh, 350 um, clicks to the website so we're assuming that um, all, all those clicks obviously go through to the website. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. No, that, that makes sense. And then you end up with your total variable cost below, which is just the sum of whatever different variable costs you, you input in. And, and there probably, there's probably not going to be too many. I think payment processing and pay traffic are, are definitely the most common ones. Yeah, that's right. And then below that is something called contribution margin, which in accounting terms simply means what's the 
uh, amount of cash flow or profit contributed to you after these variable expenses. Or another way of putting it is how much how much more money do you get from from selling more courses and okay. sort of before the fixed cost of the business. And so right now it's in brackets, ninety two dollars in brackets. So that's a uh, that represents a loss then, right? That, that's right. So. Because um, again, the course price was only fifty bucks. You, exactly, you sold one course for fifty, and you spent one hundred and forty-two on marketing. Yeah, and I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that you know you'd probably spend more than you earned in the first few months, and so that, that's sort of what I've shown yeah. in as an example. What if we uh, if we just change that course price without touching anything else? Not we don't change the number of people who hit the site. We don't change conversion rates. Nothing. Let's just put in a course price of five hundred and see and see what happens. So, so the marketing expenses stayed the same, yep. same amount of traffic, same, same conversion. The only thing that's gone up is the payment processing has gone, went from whatever it was, one or $2 to 15. Yep. So the contribution is 345 and then after your fixed costs is 245. So, okay. So we got 345 in profit before we get into the fixed costs. Um, so right away we can see one of the main benefits of, of increasing uh, the price of a course. <laughs> makes it makes it a lot easier to be profitable uh, especially if you're spending money on ads I mean if you're spending money on ads and your course is 50 bucks it might be pretty tricky to generate a profit you might have to do a lot of testing or run a lot of ads till you find out what works or you get your your cost per click down um, but yeah okay so cool it's it's easy enough to to see what happens when we just change the price of a course there. So if we keep going down to fixed costs, um, so what are the assumptions you've made here with uh, with what are you know some of the possible fixed so, costs that someone could have? Yeah, so I think I don't I don't know if hosting is necessarily what you'd call it, but you know assuming you're you're running on the Thinkific platform, I think your your sort of premium business plan is ninety nine dollars a month if you go on the monthly thing. So I just rounded that up to a hundred. Okay. So in in month one, I'm saying your your only expense is Thinkific, okay. plus whatever you spent on Google AdWords, and so so you have this fixed cost here of a hundred a month, and then. Once you deduct that, you're you're left with a sum metric. You might call it profit before taxes. You might call it cash flow. It, but essentially, this is what's left over for you at the end of the day. Okay, okay. Um, no, that that makes sense. So, ca and what do we got below cash flow margin? What does that mean? So the margin takes that net number, cash flow or profit, and divides it by the revenue. So over time, you see that this goes from from being a negative margin to breaking even, and then ultimately having a very high margin of of fifty percent, which would be you know a very profitable little business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, and so going continuing down the spreadsheet, there uh, we've got customer metrics, uh, and there's a couple of them of of them in there. So if you could just explain what what the uh, those abbreviations stand for CAC AOV over CAC. Like, what is the what do those mean, uh, and why is it important for us to track those as well? Sure. So there, there are a variety of customer metrics you might want to track, and and everyone has their own spin on it. But the the CAC stands for customer acquisition cost, and and I've put in brackets here paid, which which is to say, how many of the customers did we get from paid channels? Hmm. And, and how much did we pay to get each of those customers? And so in the early days, uh, you see we're spending quite a bit of money to, to get a customer, um, and, but then going down over time. And then below that, AOV is the average order value, or you might call it the average, you might rename that to average course price or something like that. But it's important to look at the ratio of the average course revenue to the acquisition cost. And if that, if that ratio is less than one, meaning you, let's say you have a $500 course um, and you spent $700 to get that person, so that, so it's um, you, you have this ratio being less than one, then you're you're not generating value. Um, but if you have this over time, if you have this becoming up greater than one and this and up to two times, you're actually creating a lot of value by acquiring those new customers. Right, right. Okay. So for, for someone who has um, 
a recurring revenue business than or, or repeat customers. There's this concept of customer lifetime value or LTV. Mm-hmm. And then that would be a function of that, that same person coming back and buying multiple courses. So you could in fact pay more to acquire that person. But in this case, we're just assuming it's only, it's only a one-time purchase per, per customer. Okay, cool. Um, and so what uh, you've got, so that's it as far as uh, the data that we're tracking. And then below that, you've got uh, some graphs, correct? Some charts that just show visually the, uh, the data? Yeah, so these just auto auto populate. If you were to use this, um, you know, I, f- I find this helpful representation where we've got twelve months uh, of, of monthly site traffic, and I've just used a stacked column chart here to show, uh, based on the legend, you can see what each channel represents, uh, and so you okay. can you can see that um, particularly it's easier to see in in the twelfth month that this business is primarily driven by by paid traffic on the top there. Yep. and um, some direct traffic in the middle and then organic search traffic at the bottom. But uh, social and and the other category don't make up very much. Mm-hmm. Below that, I'm tracking the average course price or the average order value over time. And, and we can see it ramping up to 300 at the end. Below that, I'm calculating the monthly profit or monthly cash flow whatever term you prefer. And you can see this business, it's, it's, it's negative in um, the first six months, first seven months, and then, and then turning positive over time. Here's another good one to track, the conversion rate. And I've, there's two conversion rates for this course creator. So um, the, the blue one is the free trial and the orange one is the, the full conversion. And you can see that hopefully both of these are trending up and to the right over time meaning the conversion rate is getting higher. Um, monthly revenue, that's the number of orders times the average course price. Mm-hmm. And then you've got this annualized cash flow or profit, which is which is basically the same as the one that I showed up here. The monthly one is just multiplied by 12. Okay. So that's this. Um, and then you've got the total number of orders. That might also be helpful to track starting from one at the beginning, getting up until 16 in, in the 12th month. Um, this one is called the the annual run rate, which is the annualized revenue. So I've taken the monthly revenue and multiplied it by 12. Okay. So you, you can see here this business is doing almost 60,000 a year by the 12th month. Yeah. And the last one was is the ratio of the the average course price or order value and to uh, to the customer acquisition cost, and we want to be above one. That means like and profitable is above one point oh, right? Yeah, exactly. So you could we could actually add like a dotted line here along one that might be helpful, and then you can see that um, you know you're, you're sort of break, breaking you're you're over one at the end. Now I should say you you probably want to be a fair amount higher than one, but at least at one you're breaking even on the acquisition cost. It doesn't necessarily mean your business is, is making money. Right, right, no, that, that's a good point. Um, so if somebody has just one course, then is the average order value going to be different from customer lifetime value? Or how do you, how do you define customer lifetime value? Like what is that time frame lifetime? So it, it's calculated into perpetuity. So it, if you had someone who came back, um, you know, or, or if it was a monthly plan is probably an easier way to think of it. If it was a monthly plan and on average um, your customers subscribed for three years. Mm-hmm. So you'd have 36 months. Essentially what you would do is you would take the monthly revenue mm-hmm. and you would multiply it by 36 to get the, that would be the lifetime value of the customer because you know that on average they're going to stay with you for 36 months mm-hmm. before canceling. Okay, cool. And then if it's just if you've just got one course and they just pay one time and let's say you don't yet you know you don't ha- you don't yet have plans to create multiple courses and be able to sell more than one course to the same customer, then let's just assume that the the lifetime value of that customer is just whatever your course price is essentially until you have more more courses to offer them. Uh, essentially, and and just a quick comment that when I'm saying lifetime value in this context. Mm. It, 
I mean revenue. Okay. And there's there's all sorts of definitions of lifetime value. Some people like to deduct um, costs such as you know the, the variable cost, payment processing, if, you know whatever other variable costs you have. Um, you could even also discount over time to get a net present value. There's all sorts of variations, but for simplicity, let's just say that revenue is what we're looking at. Okay, cool. Well, this is uh, this has been really helpful. Um, thank you so much for you know taking the time to walk us through this. Uh, and again, this template, Tim was kind enough to share it, uh, so you can grab this template. There will be um, there will be a place where you can you can uh, just enter your email to download the template below the video. We'll make sure that's available. Um, Tim, is there anything that uh, that we missed? Is there anything that we didn't touch on yet? Um, or any terminology that's important, any other metrics that might be important? What do you think might, might also be uh, valuable for somebody building an online course business to be conscious of? Gee, I don't know. I think we've covered a lot in a short time. Um, I'd love to do a follow-up, though, if there are questions or, or, or comments that come back. Maybe we can do a follow-up session. But um, I think off the top of my head, think, just thinking about, uh, just to reiterate, thinking about activities that generate results so whatever that is for your business, whether it's creating content, uh, blogs, pages for your website, tracking those and seeing how they generate uh, people to your course landing page, how well that course landing page is converting, and it might be a two-step conversion. And then once you have that data, optimizing your business. So looking at what's working, what's not working, focusing all your efforts on those that produce the best results. And then over time, you'll have hopefully a really good growing uh, e-learning business. Yeah, yeah, uh, good, good point. And this, and this ties back to, you know, the whole reason you, you track this information in the first place is so you can make better decisions for your business. Um, and I really appreciate that you, you, with that example you just showed us, um, you assume that somebody's, it's going to take a few months to become profitable. Uh, and that's the case with most businesses. Uh, you know, they're not, they're not built overnight they're not always profitable overnight because there's there's a learning curve involved there's you testing different channels testing different marketing testing different price points there's a lot of testing that goes on until you find the formula that works for your business and so with you know each month with all those columns and with all those metrics we can look at you've made it you, you've given us a very simple way to track what's happening uh, and then from that data, be able to predict what can happen later, realistically, uh, be able to set goals. And, you know, maybe that can be part of uh, if we do some sort of a follow up training later on, because with this with this, I think people will be able to go and take that template, maybe customize it a little bit, start tracking the data for their online courses. But once they've got some data, so let's say somebody has six months of data from their business and uh, now they want to start setting goals and forecasting. Maybe we could do some kind of a training on on you know sure. on that phase. We didn't really touch yeah, on forecasting too. too much, but I think that might be the next uh, a natural next step. Yeah, awesome. Sounds good. Cool. Well, Tim, thank you so much. Um, this has been a pleasure. Uh, if our audience wants to get in touch with you, if they have any questions, if they want to you know check out your courses, check out your stuff, uh, where can we send them? Yeah, so I think the best place to start is our website, corporatefinanceinstitute.com. Uh, we've got all sorts of templates. Uh, we've got several free courses, you know, an accounting crash course, how to read financial statements. Um, so, so you can certainly help yourself to all those free resources. If you want to reach out to me, you can email us at learning at corporatefinanceinstitute.com. And I'm happy to take any questions over email. Okay, awesome, Tim. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.